I'm Debbie Levin. I'm the CEO of the Environmental Media Association. We are here today, very excited about this. We are here today with Kelly Vahakis Hanks, who is the president of um, ECOS and long, long, long time partners with, um, with our organization, dear friends. And we are with also with Michelle Romero, who is the director of Green for All. Um, another longtime partnership board member of the Environmental Media Association, and my amazing dear friend Constance Zimmer, who has been an incredibly active board member on uh, for Emma for years and years and years and years. I think we figured it out, and we, I don't even remember the, the number, like 12 or 15 or 45. One of those, one of Let's just take 45. Let's 45. Take and so what we, we have a lot to talk about today. So what I'm going to do is I think that we've got we've got a bunch of questions. And I think we're all just going to sort of have this conversation about what we're going through now and the importance of environmental issues, sustainability, and also being really clear and conscious about the products that you bring into your home always something that is top of mind anyway. But Constance, I think that I'm gonna throw it to you for the first question. Okay, well, and also I think what's even more compelling uh, about this conversation is that I've never heard people nowadays speak so much about cleaning products in their lives. Like people are so much more aware of what it does, how it affects things, how it helps. I mean, I've been fortunate enough to raise a kid that always washes her hands like 20 times a day. We've just always been very clean people, but this pandemic has really forced people to understand what they have in their homes, what they're using, how it's breaking down, what's good for the environment, what's bad for the environment. So I love that we have both of you ladies to talk to because I would love it if you could tell us how this pandemic is affecting your world and how you're responding to it because it's all changing so rapidly. It really is, Constance. Well, thank you for that question. Certainly, this pandemic has brought front of mind to so many people. How can they protect their families? How can they protect their loved ones? How can they protect themselves? And, you know, our mission at ECOS has always been to empower people, to give them information, to make sure they have access to it and certainly protecting the health and wellness of people and the planet is at the forefront of everything we've done for the last 53 years. So uh, when this pandemic really hit hard here, middle of March, we saw huge runs on stores. So grocery, club, I mean, retailers experienced unprecedented uh, numbers of shoppers who were really anxious and concerned and worried and buying large amounts of cleaning products. And so from all our side, uh, we have four manufacturing facilities across the nation. And as you know, Constance, I was lucky enough to host you there. Um, they're all carbon neutral, water neutral, zero waste, and certainly our essential workers um, are also on the front lines of creating products to protect people from COVID, uh, both our consumers and frontline workers, because cleaning products are key. But it's also important to talk about what cleaning products we use in our homes when we're looking to protect ourselves, not only from this crisis, but at any time. And so I think the CDC has done a very good job of giving consumers a lot of resources, what you should do. So first and foremost, they told everybody, wash your hands for 20 seconds. And I was certainly thrilled to see on social media and a lot of platforms, people singing songs and doing different things to really make sure they got in that 20 seconds. But at the same time, it's also important what you're washing your hands with, right? So when you're using a hand soap, and this is key, Soap is what's most important. The CDC clearly said, use soap when washing your hands. There was a great New York Times article about this. To wash your hands, first and foremost, is soap. If you don't have access to soap, you can utilize you know, a hand sanitizer or other things, but the best thing is soap, because what soap does is it has a hydrophilic and a hydrophobic part of the soap molecule. And the hydrophobic part, or the part that's afraid of water, let's say, it's a good Greek word, actually penetrates the membrane of the virus, disrupts the virus, and then you wash it away. And so you really wanna look for a soap. I would encourage people, look for soaps that are like our Ecos brand, hypoallergenic, 
pH neutral, made from plant powered ingredients. Because every day you're rubbing it on your hands, it's being absorbed through your skin, and you want to make sure you're not exposing yourself on a frequent basis to ingredients that are toxic and damaging to human health. Um, at the same time, you know, there's a lot of other things that people should be doing. Cleaning surfaces. The CDC clearly says number one, clean, and then number two, disinfect. People shouldn't be cleaning with disinfectants, right? When you use a disinfectant, you should read the instructions. There's a dwell time. Usually dwell times are 10 to 20 minutes where you spray it, you let it sit. You know, you should be using proper ventilation and face masks and other things because there's sometimes very harmful ingredients. But before you disinfect, you need to first clean. And the CDC defines cleaning as the removal of germs, viruses, bacteria, and other things from a surface. So when we're removing things from our surfaces, like we should be doing frequently, look for cleaner, greener products to do that, right? Because for instance, in our brand, right? We make sure that it has no volatile organic compounds or other things that are harmful to lung health. In this crisis, one of the most important things is having healthy lungs. We don't be, want to be using cleaning products that actually damage our immune systems and compromise our lungs. So selecting products with a safer choice certification, it's important in this crisis. No, well, Kelly. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, it's interesting because when this all began in March, I got a million calls from people saying, wait, what about my plant-based cleaners? Is that yes. okay? Does that yes. work? And yes. these were people that knew and that had yes. never questioned. And I mean, I was like, guys, think about it. I mean, yes. this is what you need to be using. This is the safest thing. Absolutely. And so it's so interesting that, that people all of a sudden die hard, plant-based, you know, people who, you know, eat, breathe, and clean with, with plants, right. got nervous about it, and then immediately were reassured when they realized that that was exactly what they should be using. Well, um, I, this, is a, this is a good question, because I had the same question, because everywhere it was saying, do not use hand sanitizers or cleaning products that don't have alcohol in them. They were saying they had to have alcohol, they had to have ethanol, otherwise they weren't going to work. And so Great that, question. right, that automatically made everybody say everything yep. that's plant-based is not going to work because it doesn't have ethanol in it. Right. So, so you, you can definitely have plant-derived ethanol. We utilize plant-derived ethanol in our products. So ethanol can come from petroleum or it can come from plants. And we use it from plants and the efficacy is just the same. It's just a different source, right? So when you look at the hand sanitizers and they talked about having ethanol and alcohol, the CDC says, first and foremost, wash your hands, right? So the actual washing of your hands with soap and water is by far the most effective thing. And then they say, if you can't find that, then look for a hand sanitizer that has the ethanol or the alcohol, because a hand sanitizer, you're going to spread on your hands, right? You're going to rub it together. Now, if it hits the virus, it's going to kill it, but you don't have the same removal. You don't have the same wash off abilities, which is why the soap and the water is much better. But when you move into the green cleaners, we do utilize plant-powered ethanol, right, um, in our products as well. And for the cleaning, you know, a disinfectant works when the surfaces are first cleaned. And so when the CDC says, number one, clean, number two, disinfect, if you just spray a disinfectant and then you just wipe it away, it actually didn't do its job, right? You want to spray your cleaner. You want to remove all of the the bacteria, grime, dirt, germs, all of those things. And then on areas that there might be frequent traffic and a lot of touch points, you want to disinfect. I, of course, would say look for a green disinfectant, um, a botanical disinfectant. There's, you know, we're actually coming out with one ourselves as part of our Ecos portfolio. Um, but there are, there are cleaner and greener choices for everyone. So Michelle, can you let us know how you're handling that with Green for All? Because you're dealing with communities that might not have access to a lot of products that we may have access to. I think it's important to kind of talk about how you guys are dealing with the pandemic and how you're helping yeah. people in communities that are also like lower income and can't just go and buy these items. Yeah, definitely. I mean, in the middle of the pandemic, it's a, this is something that's affecting everyone, right? Uh, I read something recently, though, that said we might be all in the middle of the same storm, but we are not in the same boat. Uh, and that really is true. Low-income communities and communities of color 
we're already at a disadvantage in our old economy. There's reasons that reports are coming out showing that black and brown communities are affected by COVID, having the most extreme symptoms, dying at much higher rates. And these are the communities that we work with. So already, you know, struggling um, communities just to have clean air and drinking water <laughs> that so many of us take for granted are now facing situations where, for instance, they're at home running their energy bills more than they're used to, but maybe not having a paycheck come in. And so Green for All is um, an advocacy program that works to make sure that as the clean economy grows, we're actually lifting people out of poverty and that as, um, you know, and basically that we can put people to work building a more sustainable future. I think right now as um, more and more people are starting to talk about reopening our economy and thinking about going back to normal there's like some sense of hope in that for some people but for the communities we serve normal isn't good enough going back to normal still means that you have certain communities that are completely um, dumped on in terms of toxic waste and air pollution going back to normal means you still have people without adequate health insurance and the ability to just live healthy lives. And so for us, um, and this is why I'm excited to be on, on this call and with ECOS, with the partnership that we're, um, that we're launching, you know, we're able to sort of redouble our efforts, that this is something we're doing around the clock now to really fight for a better future. Can you guys talk about the partnership and explain what that is? Absolutely. So just so thrilled to have Ecos partner for Green for All, especially during these extraordinarily difficult times. Um, I became aware of their work many years ago when they first started back in 2007 and long admired um, what they did uh, to really lift people out of poverty and doing it by building a green economy. And that's certainly what our commitment has always been at Ecos as well. Since our company was founded in 1967, we wanted to create products that were accessible to all, that were affordable for all. Not products that were green for the affluent communities, but products that you would find in all retailers and oftentimes at opening price point because we believe wholeheartedly that everyone has the right to a healthy home. Everyone has the right to be at a healthy school and in a healthy workplace. Um, I myself, um, as a CEO, a woman, of African-American descent, uh, growing up with my mother in the Illinois area, certainly have been sensitive to issues about race and inequality since my childhood. Um, you can actually see behind me right now one of my favorite works of art, uh, which is a wonderful piece done by Faith Ringgold, and it really showcases a lot of wonderful African-American female leaders in the civil rights movement. I draw a lot of inspiration from this and certainly from my childhood. So the work of Greenfall is something that really resonated with me personally. And how do we really create more justice and more fairness in our society? Um, I'm someone who grew up with asthma myself, and you realize the detrimental effects of being close to, to different types of industry, different types of products and other things on young developing lungs. You know, our children today are born with 200 plus chemicals coursing through their bodies. And so uh, the work Green for All does is very important. Also as a company, you know, we took a stand a long time ago on a fair living wage, starting our minimum wage at 17 an hour and really trying to create pathways for people out of poverty. So um, really excited to partner with the team at Green for All, Michelle Ramiro, Van Jones and the work that they're doing. So the way the program works is uh, we actually created <laughs> a beautiful um, label. I don't know if you guys can all see it, but this is our Green for All label. And so a dollar for every bottle of our Ecos laundry detergent that we're selling in the marketplace uh, here now in March and April is going to Green for All uh, for a donation of $100,000. And we wanted to do that so we could support the amazing programs they have in place now that are more critical and more important than ever before. Woohoo! Yay. <laughs> no one's more happy than me, you guys. <laughs> um, no, and it's just been so great to work with Kelly and with Ecos, uh, a company that literally lives its values, you know, as she mentioned, just in terms of the way they support their workers and the kinds of products they're putting out. So it's been really great. And how will this help those hit the hardest with the pandemic? Yeah, I mean, our challenges are 
new and not new, right? So for instance, we were working on a clean transportation campaign called Fuel Change to make sure we can bring electric cars, trucks, and buses to underserved neighborhoods. Now that work, for instance, bringing electric school buses to schools, you know, is on pause a bit because schools are just trying to figure out how to teach the children um, with this distance learning stuff. But the mobility access issues and the need for communities to be able to reach their jobs, to reach healthcare right now um, is more important than ever. So we're looking at transportation systems that have shut down and aren't necessarily letting people get to their essential jobs or get to the hospital if they're dependent on public transportation. Um, in other cities and, and counties, you know, looking at transportation systems that are operating but haven't implemented all of the um, health protection measures to make sure people can ride safely and at a distance. Uh, so those are some of the kinds of things that we'll continue to do both in the short term, and there's my daughter. <laughs> this is life in, <laughs> in, in a pandemic. Um, so we're continuing to do that in the short term in terms of immediate response to this moment. And then also the long term, I think what, what, what we return to, or what, you know, more importantly, what we build from here needs to be something newer, needs to be something greener, needs to be more sustainable, um, and an economy that works for everyone. So we do that advocacy to create jobs um, and infrastructure investments that are what all of our leaders are looking to do to get us out of the recession that we're, or depression potentially that we're headed toward, um, and to make sure that we are shaping those investments and those jobs to be in the neighborhoods that need them most and to be green jobs and families with family sustaining wages and all of those kinds of things. You know, it's interesting because right now the needs is, the need is so high for these communities and yet so many um, uh, people of color, men and women of color, are the essential workers who are going in every day, whether it is in hospitals, in care centers, in markets, in, you know, um, manufacturing. And this is something that I think I would love to hear you speak about um, because it's a little bit unbalanced. And I think that that's what we're understanding now. It's extremely important as an employer to have really a lot of safety measures in place for your team members now more than ever and to really operate a very responsible company. I can tell you a little bit about some of the things that we're doing at Ecos for our team members. So you know, um, it was so much like that anyway. Constance went re and I went recently <laughs> and we had to put on our little hair, you know, the hair hat things and on our shoes and our outfits and there was so much um, so much attention to the safety of the workers and that was without the pandemic so I'm curious as to where you are you are now thank you Debbie I appreciate you you know realizing that and seeing kind of we put our heart into everything we do I mean our team members are really part of our family we're not just family owned we're family operated and there's so many great families that that serve and work alongside us so um, absolutely you saw that we had obviously those measures in place because we're producing our products We've added, of course, the face mask. So everybody is wearing their made with love Ecos face mask. We want some, PS. We want some. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'll send them to you guys for sure. Um, all of our team members are six feet apart, so social distancing. So if you look at our production lines now, there is a six foot kind of spacer between every team member. So they have the six feet between them. We've increased, you know, our sanitization protocols so that you have continual cleaning of the lines, workspaces, shared workspaces, and ensuring that at all times, everything remains really very clean. Um, and doing a lot of other things too. You know, I mentioned our minimum wage is $17 an hour. But uh, for the month of April, we made our minimum wage $19 an hour. Yeah. So we gave our, our team members uh, who worked in the month of April an extra $2 an hour uh, because they're working very hard. For salaried team members that are essential workers that are in our facilities and not able to telecommute, we also increased their pay in the month of April by 10% so that they too would get an extra bonus. 
Um, we're going to obviously do a lot of things tomorrow for Earth Day, giving bonuses to all of our team members, whether they're telecommuting or on site, but really making sure to operate with a lot of respect, a lot of appreciation and a lot of admiration. Um, you know, I think sometimes people don't think about what it takes to create a cleaning product, you know, and it's, it's a lot of work and we've all been working around the clock and, you know, patriotism is really defined as rising up for your country, doing the right thing for your country and for us, you know, our patriotism is really defined by creating these green cleaning products and getting them into the hands of our consumers and everyone who needs this particular weapon to protect themselves. And it's it's a way to do it. And so I really appreciate everyone at Team Ecos. I mean, from California to Illinois, Washington, New Jersey, and our team members in Greece that are servicing Europe, uh, they're all working very hard right now and uh, really grateful for all yeah. of their efforts. Yes, thank you to the essential workers for sure. And just Kelly, I just want to say like, it's so amazing to see you as a leader and the way that you lead this company. That's the thing that struck me the most about even just since we met a few years ago. Um, I think if anything, this pandemic has taught us that how interdependent we are on each other, right? That we can only be as healthy and safe as a society as our most vulnerable communities. Our economy can only be as strong as our lowest paid workers. And I think it's that, you know, vision of a green economy that truly works for everyone, not just some people um, that we share. And I just love to see how you're living that every day at Ecos. Thank you, Michelle. I so appreciate that. Thank you. And I just appreciate your beautiful support of our brand. You know, it's, um, it's really so, we're so grateful to people for really purchasing products that align with their values. And I think that is something that, you know, people could really go out into the marketplace and do, you know, really kind of look behind the exterior of brands and look for brands that are authentic and walking the walk and doing what they say. And um, I think as consumers, we should support those brands, you know, now more than ever, it's important to have people that are really reflecting what we believe in. So thank you for your support of Ecos. I'm, I'm grateful. Now, uh because everybody is w watching this stuff from home, they're doing a lot of things from home. Um, we're trying to get out as much information as we can to help people who feel very helpless. I mean, you know, there's donating money. There's, you know, we can't go and volunteer anymore. We can't go and do hands-on help, which is what, you know, I used to do and what a lot of people used to do. So I'm wondering if you, both of you could give some, pointers about ways that people could help uh, obviously the lower income communities as well as maybe just your neighbor next door um and and even if that comes down to like i don't know is there like a cleaning solution that you might have at home um that you could use do not use bleach <laughs> no bleach. please don't but, wash your produce and bleach <laughs> no please don't do that um, but I, I do wonder if you could give uh, uh, some of that because, you know, people are so panicked because yeah. cleaning products are not available and um, it, maybe there's a green alternative or ways that both of you could kind of help and uh, give something that uh, everybody could do from home. I don't yeah. know. Absolutely. I, I'd love that, Constance. So definitely everyone should go to greenforall.org. You should check out their website and you should check out the program that we're doing with them. And obviously, you know, the Ecos laundry detergent that's part of funding the critical work that they do. Um, but in terms of, you know, really talking to people, I mean, I think that the greatest answer to fear is knowledge and we're less scared when we feel more empowered and we have actions and things that we can take. So in terms of really cleaning, I would say I've seen a lot going on right now around how do I wash my produce, right? You just mentioned bleach. And I was just shocked yesterday. I was reading an article in Bloomberg where there was actually a woman who had washed her produce in bleach and then had inhaled the fumes and had been rushed to the hospital. And I thought, oh my goodness, people actually think that we should disinfect. I mean, imagine bleach was created during World War II for chemical warfare. And now people are using it to wash fruits and vegetables. So this we should not do, right? We don't want to get to the point where we're actually hurting ourselves or harming ourselves more. You've seen poison control calls go up by over 20%. Is that and true? They, yes. 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 It's crazy. Yes. It's crazy. It's crazy. There's also because it's kids have been getting a hold of the right. hand sanitizer and drinking, drinking it. 
Yeah. They're oh. drinking it. And, and it's just so, and, and it's and exactly right. It's kids. It's those who are under five that are most affected by household oh. poisoning. So surely if you have ingredients in your cleaning products that are dangerous for human health that have skulls and crossbones or any of those things, please do lock them. Please do store them somewhere that's secure. Um, but for fruits, produce and vegetables, which I know as people are shopping in grocery stores and they're concerned, I would tell people it's important to use a fruit and veggie wash. For a long time, people thought, oh, you just rinse it with water. But third-party testing has shown that fruit and veggie washes are very important. Um, in our brand, we use three simple ingredients. And some of those ingredients you might find in your very household. Number one for us is organic vinegar. That is the solvent alongside of the organic glycerin. And then the surfactant or the cleaning agent is the organic salt nut berry, which occurs naturally in nature, right? So using a fruit and veggie wash to clean your fruits and vegetables and your produce I'll and that's, even if it, that's organic yeah. or if it's conventional. So you can use that, you use yes. that on both. Yes, yes. And, and, and that's important too, because right now it might be harder to find organic produce. Yeah. And so in the case that you have to buy conventional produce, even more important to use a fruit and veggie wash so you can remove any of the pesticides residue that's on the outside of that fruit or vegetable you're going to eat. Yeah, and yes. also, if you don't have a fruit and veggie wash, I've used just a couple of drops of my Eco's uh, dishwashing detergent, right? Yeah. yeah. I do yep. a couple drops of it in the sink yep. and move around all the lettuces and carrots and everything that I get and then rinse it off and then it gets dried. So like you can use a little bit of dish soap if it's good dish soap. You can do that. You absolutely can. So as long as it's a clean, green dish soap, soap is very important because that will take care of cutting through the wax and all of the different, you know, things that are on the fruits or vegetable, bacteria, virus, grime. So a dish soap is a wonderful way. If you don't have a fruit and veggie wash to use something that will do the cleaning. Right. Or a little um, vinegar. Can you just use a little bit of vinegar in and water? Vine and vinegar as well is helpful, but I would say that the surfactant is also very useful. So I'd go with your dish soap. If you're gonna cheat it, go with the dish soap to clean it. And you're right, if it's something like grapes or something, you could soak it in your sink, put a little bit in and then soak it. Or if it's something like mushrooms, you know, I'll even create the solution and I'll use a little cloth to wipe off the mushroom so that it doesn't absorb all the water or soap. Yeah, I uh, made that mistake in like week one. <laughs> Where you just soak the mushrooms and then they're all soppy. <laughs> yeah, that was not. I was like, a mushroom's like a sponge, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then just use your, you know, all-purpose cleaners to clean all the surfaces that you're using frequently. Use your, you know, clean your laundry frequently. I think oftentimes people let laundry pile up and build a lot of dirt and germs. Wash your laundry on a frequent basis, you know, with a safer choice laundry detergent. Um, just keeping your house generally clean and doing it at a more frequent basis should provide you a lot more peace of mind. I think we're all really hungry for that peace of mind. We want to lay down at night and we want to know that the walls that we're in are safer. And by just cleaning with green products, you're going to remove a lot of the viruses, dirt, and other things. And, and that should make you feel a lot more comfortable. And also knowing that you won't have the long lasting effects. You know, in life, sometimes we can overdo it. And so then you have the bounce back of, you know, oh no, now you see an increase in asthma, you see an increase in all these illnesses. We know so many ingredients in clean products are tied to these illnesses. And what Michelle and Green for All are talking about is the disproportionate number of people in communities of color that have asthma, that have these illnesses. And so we don't want to make sure that we perpetuate that. We want to educate people. We want to talk to people. We want to give them the power and let them know, listen, you don't want to use bleach to disinfect something. Washing with soap is absolutely fine when you're cleaning your produce and you're cleaning your, your dishes uh, so that people really don't overdo it and harm themselves. So yeah. Michelle, is there anything you could tell us too about how people could help uh, with your mission for Green for All? Yeah, you know, one of the lesser talked about reasons that black and brown communities are being more impacted by COVID right now is that um, they've been overburdened by pollution, right? And these are the things that have led to higher rates of asthma, cancer, and pollution-related illnesses that are all pre-existing conditions that make it worse if you contract the coronavirus. So um, I think right now, one of the most disturbing things that we're seeing at the federal level and even in some states are um, 
these this talk of loosening up our environmental protections yes. during this time to just make it easier for people to do what exactly i'm not sure <laughs> unless it's just to pollute so um call your members of congress call your state legislators and your governors and just let them know this is not the time to be rolling back protections if anything they than ever so strengthen environment environmental protections don't weaken them um, and to treat essential workers like the heroes they are we talk about you know um, soldiers that go to war and fight wars in other lands, like we are having people show up every day, putting their lives at risk to deliver you groceries, <laughs> you know, so that you can eat. Like they are heroes right now. Um, and because of it, it puts them at higher risk of contracting the disease. They need to have paid sick leave. They need to have the personal protective equipment um, so that they can at least show up to their jobs safely. You don't ask to support the government doing that as well. Yes, so we can exactly. Support to follow Ecos's lead. That. Yes, and to do the right thing. I think you never would go and ask soldiers to go to war without the right equipment. Like, why are we asking essential workers to show up for their jobs without the right protections? That's right. Um, and then three, uh, just telling your your members of Congress and your decision makers to make our economic recovery a green one. This yes. is just one crisis, and if we don't learn about science and planning from this one, we're going to be here again, not too far from now, wishing that we had. And I would rather do that work now and solve two crises at once. I mean, and we also need to remember that the elections are, are not that far away. And so when we're voting in November to make sure that you read about the candidates across the board and yeah. vote for the environmental activists that are running and people with, with a sustainable agenda in, in, in what they represent for the different communities and for all the different positions. Positions, that's essential because we wouldn't be in this situation now where we there is even a slight majority that are voting backwards in terms of the environment. What we need to do is we need to move forward because move, coming, coming out of this crisis that we're in, the most important thing is that we don't go back to normal, is that we go back to where we're supposed to go, which is moving forward. And we need to move forward with sustainable jobs, sustainable companies, sustainable practices, sustainable energy. This is what we've been trying to do. And this seems to be a wake up call for us. Maybe the earth is looking and saying, guys, you're not doing this right. This is, there's another way to do this. And you know, they're, they're, it almost feels like there's, there has to be some kind of very grand reason for what we're dealing with. Yeah. Yeah, and I think coming out of this, I mean, Michelle, and you are absolutely right. We need to come out and be healthier and stronger. When we get through the other side of this, we want to make sure that the other side is cleaner, greener, and healthier for all. And we make our investments and our decisions all tied to that. And I'd like to just echo the idea of talk to your members of Congress. It makes a big difference. You know, if you're going to champion change, people are at home right now. What can you do? Write to your members, write to your elected representatives, ask for the legislation that you know your community needs. You know, whether that's transparency ingredients, whether that's equal access to opportunities, um, and whether that's where investment dollars should be spent. That's something that every individual has the power to do and utilize their social media platforms to really advocate for the things that we so desperately need. Oh, guys, it's so exhausting. There's so much work that has to be done. And I just so appreciate all of you that you are all doing such an incredible job. And you too, Debbie. It's like, I just, it's scary. It's like, you know, if it wasn't this horrible pandemic, it's like climate change would have shut the world down probably too. And it's, I, I mean, we're in trouble. And if this is not a wake up call for people who didn't think we were in trouble, then I don't know what is because this is, uh, we can be better coming out of it. We can be all more empathetic. We can all be more aware. We can all be kinder to everybody and understand that this pandemic is going to affect every single person on this planet. 
So now we're all realizing we are all in this together and we are all going to have to work to make it better from here on out. Like this is it. We've been given a chance to reset. And if we don't take it, then it's on us. And, you know, I think that um, it's a lot, but I think if we all remember, at least do one thing, just do one thing a day that helps the environment, helps the earth, helps somebody else, just one thing a day, that's all you have to do. And I think that's what we all just have to remember. We feel so overwhelmed by all of it and that we can't do anything and I'm just one person and what can I do? You can do one thing, just one thing a day. Yeah. I think this is that time to dream bigger, right? It's hard yeah. in a crisis to see hope, but I think, um, and this is, you know, where I think I would just invite people to share what their green dream is. Like, what does a better tomorrow look like to you? What does a greener future look like to you? You know, Kelly and I have shared some things and, uh, you know, Constance and Debbie, like we're all, we all have ideas of what it can look like and how to get there. But like you said, it takes all of us doing our part and our green dreams are just part of the picture. And so I would just invite people to, to share their green dream using hashtag my green dream and help us complete the picture. I'd actually just show you on the back of the laundry detergent, you can see the green dreams of the children who participated in the creation of our labels. So there were so many different kids that had such beautiful ideas of what a clean green future looks like. So when you get the green for all label, take a notice of the artwork on the back and what our young generation is really dreaming of. Because and we're really all moms. We're all moms here. And um, <laughs> I think that that's something that, that, motivates us every moment and what we want to have for the future for our kids and what we're dealing with now is so scary and what we've all been trying to work towards which is a different kind of economy a circular sustainable economy is something that we dream about for our children and um constance were you going to read something i was i was going <laughs> to read something because you were just saying kids and yeah. you know um, my daughter, who's 12, wrote a poem uh, for Earth Day, um, which, by the way, is every day. It should, we should just, Earth Day should be every day. Let's just talk about that. I'm so old that I remember the first Earth Day. Yeah. 1970, it's the 50th anniversary. <laughs> That's when I was born. Somebody's gonna be 50 along with the 50th anniversary birthday. <laughs> what? what? Okay. Uh, <laughs> happy birthday hey thanks a lot uh, i might be celebrating it from this very room um okay. no 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 by, by the fall it'll be better i promise <laughs> okay so anyways yes my 12 year old wrote this poem uh and showed it to me yesterday and i asked her if it was okay if i shared it because i thought this was such a perfect place to Share it. But anyways, she wrote, um, title is Our Home. We all have a place we call home. It might be tall, short, big, or small. But when we think about it, we have another home, Earth. We must act like we deserve such a, oh, it's going to make me cry. I'm uh, crying. I told, you, I told you I was going to cry. Um, we must act like we deserve such a wonderful place to live in. We must show Mother Earth how much we care. If we take care of our home, it will take care of us. Mm. I love it. Is that not the- Our sweet? home. I love she, it. She tells me. I love but it. But that was, it was also what really made me think like, oh. it, this is our, this is all of our homes, you know? Yes, they're the lower income communities. Like it is their home. Like ev it's everybody's home. So we should all- <laughs> be able to use it for uh, everything that it can give us but we have to give it yeah the gratitude and the understanding that we are all one yeah has been a very very interesting silver lining to what we're all doing and, yes. and I think that really recognizing, as we've all been talking about, that we're all in this together. Everybody is dealing with it in, in their own way, but in, we're all so similar in what, we're, what the, the obstacles are. And I just think having that, 
that moment where you look around and you're so thankful for what you have, what other people are, are doing, and really understanding that we're that this is something that we need to learn from and that we need to keep with us and we need not to just go back to like that 24 seven of not thinking about you know one thing after another, but just taking that moment to understand that we are on this planet. As Coco said, this is our home. And so I'm, I'm grateful for all of you. Thank you. You know, Debbie, Ecos is Greek for home. And so that's why the brand is called Ecos because it's home and it's our Ecos and our home and our shared planet. And uh, I couldn't agree with you both more. I mean, it's, it's everything. And we all need to really listen up, take heed, take action and do it now before it's too late. Yeah. And go shopping and get, and get um, Ecos for Green for All. <laughs> For the next two months. It's doing double duty. It's helping Green for All. It's helping yeah, it's you know, communities of lower income. It's it's helping you. It's helping somebody else. Um, you know, you really can't go wrong. Right. Yeah. Well, thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Happy 50th anniversary of Earth Day. Happy 50th. Yeah.